Hi Girl Scouts, Betsy Nichols here, Program Specialist for the Girl Scouts of Minnesota and Wisconsin Lakes and Pines, returning to you from Duluth, Minnesota. This video is part three of four for the Senior Think Like an Engineer journey, and today I will be guiding you through the third design challenge. But first, let's get started with the Girl Scout Promise and Law. On my honor, I will try to serve God and my country to help people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Great. So. This design challenge is called assistive device. So the premise is elderly people often have a harder time moving around than when they were younger. For example, they may have trouble to get up and down from couches or stairs, trouble reaching things from the floor or high shelves, or trouble grasping items like cans or books. Today, you have been hired as rehabilitative engineers to invent a new assistive device to help the elderly. So, the criteria that your assistive device needs to meet is it must be able to pick up a ping pong ball off of the floor. It also needs to be able to grab a cup off a shelf and move it to a table. It needs to be comfortable for the user and it needs to be easy to carry and convenient for people to use. That's our criteria. The constraints that we are working with are you can use up to four pieces of cardboard, four paint stirrers, eight brass tacks, five paper clips, two small paper cups, um, newspaper, printer paper, construction paper, um, one sheet of felt, 10 rubber bands, five wooden skewers, tape, and string or wire. Uh, you can also use scissors to assist you while you are building, but the scissors cannot be part of your final prototype. And um, that is it. So I am going to uh, look around my home for what I just read. As always, um, it is okay if you don't have everything listed. I know for sure I don't. So I will either have to go without some of these items or find some creative substitutions, um, but that is a-okay. And also make sure that you are having permission to use anything that you are hoping to um, include into your prototype. So I'm gonna round up those supplies and I will be right back. I am back with my supplies. So I have a smattering of cardboard. I am repurposing cardboard from a different design project. So I have more than four pieces, but they are um, just lots of scraps. I do have some long kind of tubular ones. Um, so I'm hoping to use those. I also have three paper clips. I have a bit of wire. I um, am bringing back my uh, paper cups that I made out of toilet paper rolls from the zip line challenge. I have my tiny hair ties. I have my regular hair ties and I have found two rubber bands. Uh, no paint stirrers, so I have my trusty aluminum reusable straws. Um, I have my scissors. I have twine. I have um, a whole bunch of washi tape let's see and then I have a piece of felt so that those are my supplies that is what I'm going to um, create with and then I don't have any ping pong balls so I'm going to try to pick up a sock off of the floor so this is a sock that I rolled up kind of into a donut shape I'm gonna try to pick that up off of the floor um, but I do have uh, cups that I can try to lift off of the shelf and take to a table. So I'm set on those fronts. So I am going to start designing and building my prototype. Why don't you take a moment to do the same and I will be right back. I have my finished reacher. So I made a long handle out of 
cardboard um, and then it's actually two pieces of rolled up cardboard so this one is this kind of um, skinnier one is sitting inside the wider one and then I made a basket out of cardboard that I scored all of this is scored so that it could wrap up into a tube and then I um, secured the bottom of my basket with a rubber band and a piece of felt and then um, I ended up kind of driving my cardboard tube through the basket chamber to hold it in place. So now I need to do my tests. First test is I need to pick up a ping pong ball off of the floor. Like I said, I don't have any ping pong balls, so I'm going to be using a rolled up sock. So let's go test it out. So that was the first test. Now I need to move on to the second one, which is moving a cup from a shelf to a table. I'm going to be using some plastic Tupperware because all of my cups are either ceramic or glass. And just in case this test doesn't work, I don't want to break anything. So I'm gonna use it, um, some plastic Tupperware instead. So let's get testing. Okay, so there you have it. Um, my assistive device passed both of the tests of picking up something from the ground and transferring something from a shelf to a table. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and I just wanna say, while you're building and designing these things, if you ever get stressed out or frustrated, you can definitely take a break, set it down, walk away, eat a cookie, punch a pillow, it's all okay. Um, this was definitely a hard one for me. Um, I had some really big ideas. I wanted to, if you've ever seen one of those pickle forks or like a claw machine, um, I really wanted to have something that I could grab with, uh, like grab something like that. And I had all these ideas kind of swimming around in my mind and it was getting really stressful and really, um, difficult to kind of conceptualize that and uh, transfer my ideas down to paper and then into the building process and so you know I was kind of getting a little frustrated and so I was like time out you need to you need it to pick something up and you need it to grab something off of the shelf using a claw isn't the only way to achieve that. There are other ways that you can pick things up. You can scoop, you can, you know, kind of push and shove. And so that's okay. And having to reframe your mindset and your plan is all about what being an engineer is. And, um, and so I, I really would have loved it if I could have made something that kind of had a claw aspect to it. Um, but I'm also really proud with what, uh, I'm really proud of what I produced with just the cardboard and the basket. Um, it's hard to manipulate cardboard. It's hard to get it to be structurally sound and reliable. Uh, so I'm still really proud of what I produced and I hope that you're proud of what you produced as well. Um, with all of that said, this concludes the third and final design challenge for this series. Um, so if you just stop right here, then you will be good to go to get your um, Think Like an Engineer badge. But if you keep going um, and join me next week for our fourth video, we're going to kind of do a wrap up and we're going to talk about how can we take, you know, the different design challenges that we've done, how can we take those and use those as inspiration for a take action project that we can do um, with our communities. So that's what we're going to be talking about next week. And then if you follow through with that, then you will have um, both badges complete. The Think Like an Engineer badge and the Take Action badge. And together those will make the Think Like an Engineer journey.
Um, so I hope you had fun today. I hope it wasn't too stressful and I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope that you are healthy and well. I'll see you next time. Bye.